Hey friends, thank you for joining me. I am still here painting at the mill and uh, had just started a few minutes ago the oil stage. I glazed the entire painting in oil. Um, before that it was all acrylics. And uh, let me see, let me get down here a little bit. And I thought this would be a good dedicated uh, demonstration of what I'm here calling the the magic of negative painting. <laughs> I don't mean I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> I mean the magic of painting in not painting the object that you are rendering, which is the, of course the normal way of painting, but instead painting what's behind or around the object. Um, anytime you paint sky holes in a tree, or in trees, that's what you're doing. You're negative painting. You're not painting the tree, you're painting what's not the tree in order to make the tree look more like a tree, right? Um, I, I have said often that uh, the, our eye enjoys the trick, calling it that, it enjoys the trick of negative painting so much that you should look for opportunities, look for excuses for doing negative painting whenever possible. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now, this, what I'm doing today here is not a surprise to me. It's a surprise to everybody that's been watching me throughout the day because until now, the sky has been various shades of red, yellow, and orange, and then at the end, uh, really a, a burnt orange brown color after I put the glaze on it. Uh, and the glaze, by the way, got a lot darker because it picked up. I tried painting and drawing with a Conti crayon a little bit, and it didn't, doesn't work very well because it, it gets, uh, turns gray with the with the uh, liquid medium. Anyway, so the, the, the glaze here is much darker than my normal, but that's all right. I worked off some with a rag and as much as I wanted. And uh, what I've known from the very beginning of the painting, I've known that I was going to make this a blue sky. Um, and again, using this trick of not painting these whirly gigs, they're called here for the 14th annual whirly gig festival. Not painting the whirly gigs, but in fact painting around them. And really, this is this what I'm doing right now is the most will be the most uh, fastidious, uh, careful, tight part of of the entire painting will be the the sky. And uh, really drawing the whirly gigs again not by drawing them but by drawing or in this case painting around them i'm trying hard to keep the the focus here so i'm doing a lot of hard edges in this area and when i come up here closer to the top and closer to the corners i'm trying to do um force myself to stay soft because I don't want I don't want eyes getting stuck at the top of the painting right I, I don't mind people taking a quick trip up here and getting a form of pleasure by looking at the loose 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 stuff but I don't want them to stay up there so I want them to come back to the focal point this area here now after negative painting the uh, whirly gigs, I will indeed come back and positive paint them a little bit, but not as much, not as much as the negative painting that I'm doing right now. Hello. Oh, I know. Well, if I, if I wasn't talking to these people, I would plug in there and talk to you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you artists? So, oh, good, good, good. So. I call this, um, this broadcast, I'm calling it the magic of negative painting. Of not painting, not painting the, the object, but rendering the object by painting around them. It's our eye enjoys that trick. You, you get it, because you can tell I painted the, the sky, 
and really drew the whirly gigs by painting the sky. And it gives our brain a little wiggle of pleasure. So at least, at least I think it does. Going through, and painting's this big, of course, going through a awful lot of paint. <laughs> More than I'm used to, shall we say. I should be used to it. I've had painted this large for years, but it still kind of surprises me. But let me can you see what I'm doing here. Um, let me describe my my method here. <laughs> Come close, so you can hear what I'm saying. Come on around here. <laughs> I have friends trying to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I'd be I'd be glad to talk to you. <laughs> So part of my method here is, and first of all, how do you paint a whirly gig? I mean, good grief, every time I look at it, I see something else that he stuck on there. And it's just, it's crazy. And it's always moving. So I'm not gonna try to, I mean, I've looked at it a lot and took pictures and looked at the pictures, but I'm not trying to capture it bar for bar and, you know, star for star, that's crazy. I just want to give the general impression of the whirly gigs. And so there's X up here that are, are extraneous to the whirly gig. Um, well, in fact, you know, I, I would rent, I would look at the whirly gig, like that dark line right there. What's that supposed to be? Well, at one point, I thought that was part of the whirly gig. As I continued to draw, it's like, oh no, that's not part of the whirly gig. You know, change my mind. Um, same thing with this, whatever that is right there. But I'm, I want to keep a lot of those extraneous marks so now now i've got that dark mark right there and you could say well where is that and the answer is i don't it's not there i'm just i'm just trying to capture the the fact is it just looks interesting that's the more important than than real than realism is interesting and um so while i'm painting though in in opaque i can decide which keep and which ones just to cover up. What blue is that? It's titanium. It's a phthalo blue. Phthalo with with titanium. Yep. And I'm trying to stay loose up here at the top. You know, it, it more hard edges down here, but softer edges up here so that we don't get stuck up here at the top of the painting. And I don't know about you, but that is so hard to do. It's easy to paint hard edges because our eyeball goes. <laughs> Almost every artist I know is too tight and wants to get loose. Exactly. <laughs> I've known two people in my career, maybe three in my whole life, yeah. that I've met who... who <laughs> that's exactly. That's exactly right. That's that's what I teach. Four steps to get loose. How to get loose? Use big brushes. <laughs> See, and most people, when I say use big brush, they mean like like this. <laughs> I say no. <laughs> number one, use big brushes. Two, take off your glasses. Three, turn off the lights. And number four, paint with your left hand. That's right. Now you're loose. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> exactly. And, and step on something that you could break. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. I've never fallen yet. I, I have more nightmares about falling off this thing. You know, once I get here, I think I'm okay. I'm not about to fall it so easily. So one of the things that I is that you should look for opportunities to native paint things all the time. Because it's when you do sky holes in a tree, that's a negative painting. Um, Raleigh, how about you? Are you from here? So I taught, I taught an art class. Well, I've, I've got to see the, under the hammer there. 
Have you seen my show? <laughs> yeah, grab one of those or two. Oh, okay. You were, you were, we were, we were there last night. There we go. Yes, I do. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, I. I do. Oh, here, yeah, yeah, at Jerry's Autorama at the store. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was thinking last night when everybody was there, it's like, how am I going to remember all these faces? <laughs> but especially when they come with a hat and sunglasses. You weren't wearing that last night. Yes, I do. I almost, I rarely, well, I, I usually paint, well, you saw, you know, the smallest I do is 16 by 20. So if you paint this big, it actually takes more work to take two steps and look this way than it does to go like this. So yeah, I've confused people all the time because they think, they think that artists set up their easel pointing. You know, they watch cartoons. They know how artists work. <laughs> you set up your easel and look at the thing you're painting at. One time I was painting at a wedding, the worst, the funniest. I was painting at a wedding reception, which I do a lot. And it was out in a field in a, on a farm, way out in the middle of nowhere, um, near Rocky Mount. And um, it started out, the day started out with sunshine, but long into the you know reception, early in the reception, it was pitch black. So I had set up my easel with my back to the tent and the, and the, lights and the chairs and the tables and everything and I'm in that scene and when the evening when nighttime comes my easel is is pitch black I mean you can't see anything out there <laughs> and, and, and forgive me but a woman came up and she looked at my canvas she looked out in the dark she looked at the canvas she looked out in the dark I'm sorry I guess I know I shouldn't laugh at people but Come on. And I was doing a painting of what was right behind her. But she was so committed to her notion that artists always set up their easels facing their subject. <laughs> and I don't know her name, so I haven't. <laughs> I'm that stupid at other things. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you which ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yep, come back and see what it looks like. Thanks for coming by. You want? Oh, you wondered where I was? You found me? <laughs> Yay! Thanks for finding. Thanks for looking. Thank you. I'm going through liquid by the gallon too so I'm gonna have to stop and buy more liquid tonight forgive me I need to walk over here Boo. Okay, so I need to be careful here as I negative paint um, that I don't get too tight, that I don't continue the hard edges that I have here. I want to fade out at some point and get, get somewhat softer as I go down. I don't know if you've heard me before, but here's one of my mantras, and this is, I say this with with the, the conviction of a late convert. <laughs> um, here it is. It's easy for a painting to have, almost impossible for a painting to have too many soft edges. 
very easy for a painting to have too many hard edges. Catch that? Almost impossible for a painting to have too many soft edges. No, no, make them all soft. Make them all, 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 all soft. I'm trying to preach this to myself as we speak. Very easy, and that certainly applies to me. Oh my goodness, one of the perennial weaknesses of my painting style, my painting technique, is that too many hard edges. So I literally am preaching that to myself as, as I talk to you guys. Okay, you know what I should do be while, um, while, while I'm still broadcasting and while people are coming by? Let me pause in the reverse painting process here for a minute. Put these brushes down, I'll come back to them later. Um, and let's, um, let's switch over to some, some positive painting. In other words, not painting the negative, but painting the object, okay? I'm, right now I'm mixing, I'll just start arbitrarily, starting with red. And you know, of course, that in acrylic, in, in, I don't mean that at all. When you're painting in opaque colors, as I am now, they always put down a slightly darker color. You could say, you could even say slightly darker than you want. Okay, it's not how I usually put it but that would be fair enough. Slightly darker than you want so that, so that you can come back and apply a slightly lighter on top of that. Especially if you, if you do what I'm doing right here, which is I have a very particular, could, uh, could you see those strokes? I might've been off frame, sorry about that. Especially when you're doing what I'm doing here, which, and when you're doing paintings, I, I can't imagine any other way to do this. Um, small paintings are so easy because they don't take much long. Big paintings, you have to come up with a, an efficient formula. Or I'll be here for three weeks, right? I can't do that. So I've mixed up basically a color, right? A color red. And I'm slapping it down on a lot of areas. Same red. I don't, I'm not changing the color, change, 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 change. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so especially when you do that, and that's because, that's all, that's just because of efficiency. That's because I've got to get this thing done. I have not got all day. Um, but so especially when you've done that, when you've hit uh, one color over and over and over, it's paramount, in my opinion, paramount that you come back and hit these, in this case red, hit these reds again, one or two or even three more times, usually usually once or twice will do it, with a lighter color. Now, so again, some of you, if you're not one of my regulars, you could say, well, wouldn't a darker color be the same? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have the same effect? Is it, it just has to be a different color, right? And the answer is a hearty, no, 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 no. It's not simply, I'm trying to find out where this thing is. There it is. Uh, no, it's not simply that it's a different color, it's lighter. Let me put it this way. And again, forgive me, you, you regulars, you hear this stuff all the time. The human eye. <laughs> so I, I don't, in other words, I preface it that way because it's not a matter of opinion. It's not what you think. No, I don't think so. I think it's universal and it's just, in the course of decades, I've covered some principles. Here's one. The human eye does not like to see dark paint on top of light. We do like to see light paint on top of dark. Okay, so I'm slapping a whole bunch of red. And once again, at this point in the game, I'm not working very hard at all at copying one of the whirly gigs over to my over my right shoulder um, the day for the, the and I spent quite a bit of time you know throughout the day looking over there but not now now I'm just now I'm just uh, responding very much to the marks that are already on the canvas okay so once um, 
I've put down this medium. It's an intense red, but it's as far as values, light dark, it's mid-tone. It's medium red. I'm going to come back, do lighter red on top of it. And then, as I like to say, everybody be happy. <laughs> I, want, I want this painting to reflect the, the essence of Whirly Gigs, which is an absolute festival of color and movement, uh, without so much trying to uh, render or copy each. And again, I mean, I spent several hours taking photographs and looking over my right shoulder, several hours paying attention to specific Whirly Gigs. So anybody that's been here will say, oh, I recognize that one. Okay, so they're recognizable. But at this point, I'm not, I'm not focused on uh, imitation as much as I am on invention. Okay, that's, that's enough. Now I'm gonna mix some titanium white with that red that I just put down. Now, you know, don't you, that when you mix white with red, you get pink. And I like to say you get a sickly bubblegum pink, not a pleasant color. I mean, there's a place for sickly bubblegum pink, don't get me wrong. But um, generally speaking, you don't want pink. You want what looks like a light red, so you add yellow to it. Okay, so I have a slightly lighter red. Yeah, there we go. Now, if it's, all, if it's too much lighter, this, this, it won't have the effect. And also the sun's coming from the left, so of course I'm being fairly careful to put these light bits on the left edge of, say, of these poles. But it doesn't really matter too much where I put this slightly lighter color. All that matters is that I put it down. And already, just with that little bit here that I've done, um, our eyes are going, oh, that's nice. Now, now that there was a redundancy. Does that make sense to you? There was a over repetition, a monotony, because I had that same red everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Now that I'm putting light on top of it, our eyes stop complaining. And again, I don't. Non-artists don't know what their their eyes are complaining about, right? It's it's our job as artists to know what the viewer's eyes will find objectionable, if you will, and to help them. Now, you may ask the question, well, wait a minute. If we don't like seeing one color spread throughout the whole canvas, which is true, did you catch that? We don't like seeing the one color, the same color, repeated, repeated at the canvas. So then you might say, well, now you've just put two colors, so, right. So the question is, should I do a third? And the answer is, in this case, probably yes, I should. I should come back and do even a lighter red. Usually twice we'll do it, but in this case, I don't think so. I'm gonna mix up an even lighter third color. Which I've just done. So again, our eyes enjoy seeing light paint on top of dark paint, we dark paint on top of light. And I've explained that so many times that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give the therefore today. And it's just like, stay tuned. If you haven't heard that little lecture, how to get around that conundrum, then I'll, I'll be doing it again in the not too distant future. So that's probably good enough. I'll be doing very much what I what you just saw me do with red, I'll do with white. I'll put down a, a dirty warm white and then come back and do lighter white and lighter again. Same thing with blue. A lot of this, a lot of this stuff is red, white, and blue, and then a decent amount of yellow, 
then all the other greens and purples and so forth are very uh, spotty, just a little bit here there. Okay, and I'm going to get all kinds of emails from from YouTube saying I'm playing copyrighted music on my channel. So sorry about that. But I'll stop there. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it. Let me see if there's any comments on this, any chat. Okay, good. Yes, I am trying to capture feelings. <laughs> I'm doing good. Hey, if you just tuned in, I'm painting at the Whirly Gig Festival. Let me take a second to turn you... Um, there's where, there's what Whirly Gig... Let me turn you the other way. Hang on. There we go. Um, they're huge. Absolutely huge. Fun. Okay, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it. I'll be back sometime later today.